Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing an updated review for this portable painter palette. Uh, this is a watercolor palette that I reviewed earlier in 2017 and if you missed that review I'll go ahead and put a link up here, although you've probably seen it around on YouTube on other channels if you haven't already seen my review of it. Really, really quickly before we get started, I do want to let you know that it is storming really, really good outside, and so I'm hoping that it doesn't cause too much background noise, uh, but thank you in any case for hanging with me. The Portable Painter was a crowdfunded uh, palette back on Indiegogo in December of 2016, and since then Steve has been doing a really great job of sharing this with watercolorists around um, social media and on YouTube to spread the word about this really great uh, little compact device. So today we're going to be taking a look at how I've been using my portable palette, how it differs from others, and some additions that Steve has added to include in this design to make it a little bit more useful. So before we open this up and take a look at the new additions to the portable painter, let's go ahead and set this aside for just a moment and let's pull out my typical travel kit that I take when I am on the go. This is one of my watercolor bags that I sell at conventions. My next convention will be at Anime LA in Los Angeles. Actually, it's in Ontario, which is outside of Los Angeles, but uh, if you are in Southern California and want to come by and say hi and see some of these bags, uh, I'd love to see you there. Um, but this is what I normally keep in here. I have a second portable painter that I have, and I've got pencils, water brushes, a travel brush, an eraser, a uh, Faber-Castell pit pen and a white gel pen. And um, this is the original design for the portable painter. You'll notice that it didn't have a little strappy band on it. And inside I had actually opted to take out the pans that it came with and replace them. Whoops, looks like I had some wet paint when I closed this up last. Um, but I ended up, I ended up taking out the physical little uh, pans that were in here and I just filled the plastic wells on the portable painter itself. If you haven't seen this set before, how it's meant to be used is that the case for the portable painter converts into some standing water wells and so you make this little kind of table-y type of deal out of it and I know you can't see it very well but you'd place this on your knee while you're sitting or it can also uh, balance itself on uneven terrain when you're outside. What it does lack is that there is no ring on the back of it to hold. This is marketed as a hands-free portable palette so you're not going to find any thumb rings that you would find on other metal tins perhaps that you would hold. This one is meant to be used uh, on your lap or on the ground next to you. Um, sometimes when I'm at home and I'm using this palette I'll just leave the water cups off and I can leave it flat on my desk and that works too. As I mentioned, these wells are designed to be filled about halfway with water. You can use one for rinsing your brush and the other for getting clean water. It's a really great two compartment system. Um, I find that I myself am a bit accident prone and if there's a way for me to tip something over, I will. Not that this is unstable, this is incredibly stable. You can push on either end, but when I'm sitting down, having it on my leg, I bump into things and that kind of thing. So my preferred way to paint outside, whether or not it's the portable painter, is not with fresh water. It's actually actually with my water brushes. So I do carry my water brushes around with me in my palette and um, I prefer to work with those and the thing I use my side wells for are actually to store my tools. So I put my water brushes and my pencil, maybe even my eraser. I often put this little clippy in the side too so I don't lose it. Um, although I will tell you about the addition that they made to the, the new accessories that makes that not necessary. Um, I don't actually have the original paintbrush in the well because I use the water brushes. And I think that's it in terms of how I typically use this. You can see it's been very well loved and uh, I use it all the time. But now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new additions. So one of the things that Steve, the creator of the Portable Painter, got as feedback is that there wasn't a place to put this little metal clippy dealy bob. So there is a new elastic band that you can keep this and you can also use it to hold your tools. If you are using the cases for water as it was designed for, um, you can clip or elastic band your tools to the sides of the carrying case of the water cups so that you don't lose track of them. 
The band is also designed so that you can actually slip this metal clip around the, um, the elastic itself. I find that a little bit too fiddly, so I myself don't do that, but you certainly could if you would like it to be a little bit more secure and have more room to attach your brushes to your case. Now this portable painter, I still have my pans in and it's not set like the other ones where the paint is just in the wells. And I used to have some Da Vinci paints in here, but recently with my top five favorite series that I am working on that will be back on Friday, um, I wanted to do a new selection of colors in here that were from those top five videos. So some of these are a little bit spoilery because I haven't finished that series, although I do know what colors I'm including in the remaining episodes for paint colors. Um, so if you don't want to be spoiled, you can go ahead and come back to this video after that series uh, kind of wraps up. But um, for those of you who like a little spoiler and want to see some of my favorite colors, uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at these paint selections a little bit later in the video. So the main reason that I decided not to use the pans in the first portable painter that I set up is because they actually, upon release, had a bit of an issue where they rattled. So I'm going to show you that here. They were not secure in their little wells, and so they did have the potential to move around. Now, when the palette's totally closed, it's not that big of a deal because they're not going to go anywhere. Um, but if you were to uh, knock over an open palette, they might fall out. Um, they're pretty easy to lift out, as you can see here. And so what Steve has done is he has started manufacturing these little adhesive dots that we can adhere to the bottom sides of the pans, like so. We can peel off the paper backing, let me see if you can see that, and then we can go ahead and set this into our wells, and that is going to make sure that it is nice and secure and doesn't flap around. Now you can still get these adhesive dots out by taking either a palette knife or if you have a little uh, screwdriver or a Swiss Army knife or something, and you can leverage the pans out so the adhesive dot will still stay on your pan, but they are still removable if you want to move things around. So once all of these adhesive dots are attached to our pans, we shouldn't have any problems at all. So let me go ahead and do that and I will come back to you in just a few moments. All right, we now have all our little adhesive dots on here and they've been pressed in to their wells. Um, I definitely recommend doing that step before you fill them with paint. I wanted to go ahead and let mine set up while I was away for my last convention because I have a couple of tricky uh, M-gram colors in here. They still didn't set up all the way because it's been so humid here with the rain, but I tried anyway. Uh, I made a mess, cleaned up best I could, but uh, if you have a choice, I would do these sticky dots before you fill them all with paint. And then just to show you the difference, I'm going to close this up and shake. Aside from me hitting the table, you uh, don't have much rattling around in there, so they will stay nice and put. Now, one thing I did want to mention about this that I'm not sure if I mentioned in the first review is that um, it does come with this nice little brush that has a dual end, so you can get really fine details, but even the larger end is still a pretty small brush, so I know a lot of artists prefer to use a different brush. As I mentioned, I use my water brushes when I'm traveling, but it is difficult to find another brush that will fit in here. This one is a size six Escoda, and you can see that it sticks up well above where the little container is and you cannot close the compartments. Um, and I don't know where my other travel brushes are right now, but I think all the other ones I have are even larger than this one. So um, this one is actually fits lengthwise, which some of them are too long to fit in here, but it doesn't fit bulky wise. And sometimes they're just bigger on both accounts. So that is it for the updated part of the portable painter. If you want to stick around and see a mixing chart, which I also have another video on, I can put it up here if you want a detailed account of how I set up my mixing charts and we can do that. But I haven't done one for a while and since these are colors that are some of my favorites, but some of them are new and some of them uh, I haven't used in conjunction with other paints, I thought we would uh, go ahead and do that mixing chart if you don't mind having a couple little spoilers for the top five series. So stay tuned if you would like to see that. If not, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed the content and subscribe if you would like to see more. Let me know in the comments below if you have a portable painter and how you enjoy using it and uh, I will go ahead and see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much and happy painting. Thank you.